By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a pretty exceptional match. I'm playing against one of my magic friends, uh, Park Goldfield, and he's one of these players that, you know, um, we kind of feel the same way about magic in, uh, in a lot of ways. We both feel that, you know, flavor wins over functionality, and uh, this whole game is about flavor. I'm going to play against his deck that's called the Swamp Thing, and it's a deck that he made for the Halloween competition that we were both in that was held by uh, the Order of the Ebon Hand. And um, I know it's not Halloween, that's 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 long gone, that's past, I know, um, but I still wanted to show this deck on the channel, and I'm really happy that Park uh, is playing against me today. So I've got a really sweet deck photo of his deck in the upcoming deck tech. Now I'm playing with uh, Scarwood Forest, that's my Halloween deck, so I'm playing mono green. So it's gonna be mono green against green black with, like I said, this is a heavy, flavor um, match you know this is really about the way the deck looks and there's also some functionality there are some ideas behind the deck uh, I'm going to discuss that right now in the deck tech now if you want to skip that part go straight to the games you can do that as well you can check the description below and there you will find a timestamp that reads MTG games click on there and you can go straight to the games themselves and here we're going to start by looking at the decks I think I'm going to start with my own deck Scarwood Forest this is the deck Scarwood Forest or Scarwood as I also call it and in the ticker below, that's called a ticker I believe, you can uh, read kind of the description of this deck, the flavor description, but besides the flavor description there's also uh, a strategy behind this deck and one of the most important cards in this deck is Ashnot's Transmogrant. Now what Ashnot's Transmogrant does, it's an artifact and you can tap and sack it and then it turns target creature into an artifact and puts a plus one, plus one counter on that creature. Now, that is pretty cool. I can use it, of course, for example, to pump my tracker, make it a three, three with Wailuli Wolf a four, four, and start killing some creatures of my opponent, or I could, you know, pump up my giant spider to a three, five. Um, but what I can also do with this card, I can make uh, an artifact, I can make an artifact creature of the creature of my opponent and you might think why would you do that you give him plus one plus one why would you do that well i'm playing with three relic barriers and with the relic barrier i can tap any artifact right so that is super handy for me another thing i have in this deck is meek stone and meek stone says every creature with power greater than two doesn't untap so what if i have a two two creature uh, against me that's being very annoying i can simply use my transmogrant make it into a three three tap it down with my Relic Barrier and it stays down because of the Meek Stone. Another thing that I can do, and this is where actually the Winter Orb comes in, I can use my card Scarwood Bandits. And Scarwood Bandits is a card from the dark and you can tap it to gain control of target artifact uh, of the opponent. Now the opponent can cancel this by paying two generic mana, right? So what I can do, I can use my Ashnot's Transmogrant to make one of his creatures that I want to have into an artifact creature, then try to steal it with the bandits. Now, of course, he can pay two mana to prevent this from happening, you know. Um, so then it doesn't work, and my opponent just has a better creature. That is true. But as you can see, I'm also playing with Winter Orb, and Winter Orb is an artifact that allows my opponent to only untap, well, actually me as well, the whole board, to only untap one land during your untap step. So that means that it's going to be harder and harder for my opponent to actually pay that tax because of the Winter Orb. So I'm hoping that Winter Orb, Ashnot's Transmogrant, and um, and the uh, the Scarwood Bandits kind of work together. And when you kind of look at, at the deck as a whole, you can see that a lot of um, synergy is built around uh, Ashnot's Transmogrant. You can also see a Scavenger Folk. That was the flavor text of Scavenger Folk was actually the start of this deck. Uh, scavenger Folk says, you know, pay a green, tap and sack, destroy target artifact with Ashnot's Transmogrant. It basically means that it can destroy any creature of my opponent. So a lot of this uh, deck is brewed around Ashnot's Transmogrant about what I can do with that card. Okay, so this is my deck. Take a good look. It is, it is pretty budget friendly, although 
Um, I know I have to be careful using the word budget because prices have just been skyrocketing, unfortunately. And I know that, for example, IC Manipulator in this brew is very expensive and some of the other cards have gone up in price, unfortunately. Let me put it differently. This used to be a budget-friendly deck. I always enjoy making um, decks that are accessible, that actually work, that you can look at, that you can enjoy. And then if you want to, you can build it yourself. Um, unfortunately, there are IC Manipulators in this brew and that's going to make it a little bit uh, difficult to make it budget wise but besides that it is relatively and let's please listen to that word relatively relatively affordable for an old school meta okay so this is my deck scarwood or scarwood forest as you will now let's take a look at the deck of my opponent park gofield and here we see the deck of my opponent park gofield and this deck is called swamp thing and actually the swamp thing is an altar uh, of Moss Monster, which is, of course, an hilarious card, beautiful art, but this altar is also really, really kick-ass. Uh, again, I'm having a ticker with the flavor information for you, and he also wrote it on his Instagram, so I'll make sure that I put a link to that specific Instagram post in the description below, so you can kind of look it up and go through it, if you like, just on your own pace. Now, um, I'm quoting Park here when I'm doing the deck tech because he wrote about this deck, the backbone of the deck strategy is the synergy between People of the Woods, which grows tougher, tougher with each forest in play, Untamed Wilds, which allows me to search for basic lands and to make up for the fact that I don't own any bayous, and Transmutation, a card that allows you to switch a creature's power and toughness at instant speed. So that's pretty cool, right? So. People of the Woods is two green, a card from the dark, and it has one power and a star for the toughness, and the toughness um, relies on the amount of forests that you have. So if you have five forests, it's a one five. Now with transmutation, you can switch power and toughness, so all of a sudden it becomes a five one creature instead of a one five creature. And remember, this creature is only two green to cast. And then he writes, the deck plays surprisingly well and does the best when the big creatures hit the board with a clear path to attack. If given a chance to rebuild, I'd easily swap out Marsh Gas for more copies of Spore Cloud, which was an awesome all-star card in the several matchups that I've played online. So the cool thing here is that um, I think Spore Cloud is a card from Fallen Empires and it gives you this fog effect. It's a little bit more expensive than a fog, but it gives you this fog effect but also the creatures remain tapped. So you kind of have a double fog. And on top of that, because the creatures are tapped, you have a way to burst through your um, enemy's defenses. And of course, this works really well if you have uh, that transmutation in hand and a People of the Woods in play. But it also works great with the Iron Root Tree Folk we see in this deck and the Moss Monster, because those are also two creatures that have a pretty... Uh, strong toughness but the power is not that impressive but of course when you can switch them around um, using the, um, the transmutation you can deal a lot of damage what I also really like about this deck is kind of the budget solution of Parker using the untamed wilds to kind of get his swamps or forests whatever he needs I think untamed wilds is a card that is really really underplayed in old school and I'm actually a part of that problem because I own a playset and in all honesty I don't play it enough I should play it more and after reading this text where he says you know what I'm, I don't have a bayou but I have untamed wilds I'll be fine I'm actually now tempted to go and brew with untamed wilds again and try to make a deck with multiple colors that doesn't rely on those dual lands so thank you Park for that inspiration um, again like I said before you can visit his Instagram to find some more sweet altars this is the deck of Park Gofield. Now let's go to the games. Game number one and Park sitting on the left, I'm sitting on the right. Let's take a look. Drawing my opening seven here. Can I keep my hand? Really looking forward to see both of these decks in action. Park deck seems like a lot of fun with those people in the woods. There is the opener for him. Perfect opener with that Elves of Deep Shadow. You can tap that for one black and take a damage. It's also a 1-1 one, one creature and a Pendle Haven for me. Passing turn here. There is a Swamp. So that means three mana. No creature but an attack. I'm going to 19. Let's see what I can do. There is a Forest. Tapping two. And a Relic Barrier. Let's see. There is a Maze of If. 
attack here. He can untap with the mace if he wants to. Decides not to. And tapping three here. What's coming next? Will there be a tracker, for example? Yes, there's the tracker. Creature from the dark, 2-2 two, two creature. Pay two green and tap to have it deal the amount of his power to any creature and then also take damage back equal to the power of the creature that he is fighting with. And there is a soul ring by Park. And tapping four mana here. And there's a Nevenerals disc. That is actually pretty strong here. Didn't discuss that at all in his um, in the deck deck. Attacking now with the Trekker, deciding not to kill the Elves of Deep Shadow, of course, because of that uh, Nevenerals disc. And now I'm deciding to tap his Soul Ring during his upkeep. I really want to make it difficult for him to make that decision to blow the disc. He's got three mana. Is he going to use the disc? He's first going to attack me, of course. I'm going to drop to 17. Maybe he's going to wait until my uh, my end step before he blows up the disc. I think that's exactly what he's going to do. And I'm probably going to attack first. And after that, I could decide to tap down the disc. So attacking him here, he's going down to 15 and tapping down the soaring again. Oh, look at that. He's actually not using the disc. Probably deciding there's not enough on the board yet to make it worthwhile. And there is a regrowth over the Maze of If. And passing turn, not attacking with the Elves of Deep Shadow. And now I'm, of course, killing the Elves because I really don't have any other good options now because he has that Maze of If. So I'm going to try to kill the Elves of Deep Shadow. And there is a Marsh Cast. <laughs> okay, that is funny. Marsh Cast says all creatures uh, get minus 2, minus 0. Oh, so that means that my tracker turns into an O2 creature. And it cannot kill the Elves of Deep Shadow. So he's kind of saving the Elves of Deep Shadow with his uh, Marsh Gas. There's an attack by the Elves again. I'm on 16 now. Very interesting game so far. Drawing for turn here. And I've never seen a Marsh Gas being used that way, so that's really funny. Tapping 2, trying to kill the Elves of Deep Shadow again. Are we going to see another Marsh Gas? No, not this time. Elves of Deep Shadow dies. And I'm giving Park more and more incentive to actually blow up that disc and tap down the Soaring again. And you can kind of see Park not really doing anything. And one of the strategies that he can have maybe is thinking, okay, I'm first going to kind of build my hand. And when I have enough stuff in my hand, I can always blow the disc. I don't have to do it. And I think that's actually a pretty good, um, good strategy at this point in the game. And I'm committing a little bit more to the board. I really want him to use that Nevenerals disc here. It's kind of holding me hostage. Tapping down the Soaring again. That Wiloli Wolf really works well with the Tracker, by the way. Really nice combination to see those two cards in play. There's an Untamed Wilds. And again, I don't think there's any reason for Park really to, to use the disc at the moment. He does take one damage next turn if nothing changes. And it looks like, yeah, he's passing turn. I'm untapping, drawing another card. So I guess I can attack with both here. He only has one Maze. And he can deal one damage. That's exactly what I'm doing. And yeah, he's using he's using the disc. So the Waluli Wolf was enough to kind of force him to use the disc. And this kind of allows me to play again. Look at that. Starting my second main phase, five mana open. Unfortunately, I cannot see my hand, so I don't know how many cards I have in hand. But it must be, I don't know, four or five? I didn't play out that much. Playing a Tracker and playing an Ashnaut's Transmogrant. So this is pretty good news for me. Trackers are quite important in my deck as it's one of the only ways that I can use to remove something. There's a People of the Woods, which is now a 1-3. Remember, the toughness is the amount of forests that Park has. So he's got three forests. There you see the dice. So a 1-3 creature. And I'm kind of explaining what Ashnot's Transmogrin does. I'm using it now. I'm sacrificing it to make my tracker a 3-3 in the end step of Park. There are some counters, so now it's a 3-3, and that means I can now destroy the people of the woods. And it looks like that's exactly what I'm going to do here. 
And what is Park going to do? Oh, transmutation. And transmutation means power and toughness swap. So now the people of the woods. Oh, giant growth. So what happened there is people of the woods was a 1-3. It got switched around into a 3-1 battling my 3-3 three, three tracker. That would have meant I would have lost my tracker. But in, um, in response, I play a giant growth kind of saving my tracker with that. There is an iron root tree folk, a 3-5. So it's going to be very difficult for me um, to kind of get rid of playing a giant spider. At least that's a blocker for me. One of the scenarios that can happen now as well is that he attacks with the Iron Root Tree Folk. I block on the giant spider and then kill him by dealing him extra damage with the tracker. But Park also has the maze, of course, to take his Iron Root out of combat. And now he plays another People of the Woods. It is a 1-5 creature. So things are getting a little bit more difficult for me here. Facing an Iron Root Tree Folk and a People of the Woods. Untapping here. Let's see if I can do something. He's got quite a wall up also with that maze. I don't play with any flyers. Play another giant spider. So it looks like both boards are kind of gummed up with creatures. Playing a Wailuli Wolf, so now I can make my tracker a 4-4. I just need one more Wailuli Wolf or Astronaut's Transmogrant. Oh no, that doesn't work because it's already an artifact creature. But another Wailuli Wolf or a Giant Grove would kind of help me to at least get rid of that Iron Root Tree Folk. Look at this, I'm attacking with everything here. Ooh, it looks like I'm changing my mind. Only attacking with both spiders, and I think what I'm doing right now is... I want to I want the iron root to take some damage or the people of the woods and then I can kill it with my tracker. So he's sending one of the spiders back. And is he taking the two damage? Let's wait and see. So he's blocking with the tree folk. Then I'm pumping my tracker and now I'm going to try to kill the Iron Root Tree Folk. So I'm tapping to using my tracker to fight. So I deal four damage. Oh, Giant Grove. Oh, that's bad news. That is the worst scenario for me. That is absolutely a horrible scenario for me. Well played, Park. Very good play here by Park Goldfield. And my tracker is dead, done, and dusted. Two trackers already in the bin. I'm only playing with three, and those creatures are very valuable. And just like I could save my tracker earlier by playing that uh, Giant Grove, now Park is doing exactly the same thing the other way around. Oh, look at that. Another transformation on his People of the Woods, dealing 5 damage. I'm dropping to 11 here. And it kind of looks like I'm losing this game right now. I need something powerful. Let's see what I can top deck here. An Icy Manipulator would be kind of nice right now, just to kind of stabilize the situation. Just stepping down the Tree Folk, being able to block the People of the Woods, and I would kind of be, you know, kind of be back into it. And playing a Scavenger or a Scarwood Bandits. Now, Scarwood Bandits also has Force Walk. It's a 2-2 Force Walker. And I can actually tap it. I need to pay some mana. I forgot the exact casting cost, uh, cost for that, but I can pay some mana, tap it, and I can steal an artifact of my opponent. But my opponent can pay two to kind of cancel that effect. So I think it's not going to be that relevant, that ability. Forest Walk could be relevant, but Park has that Maze of If. And look at that. He's deciding not to attack. And that makes sense, because if he attacks, I can just take the damage and attack him with my whole army. I can also make some double blocks that are good for me. And of course, I've got the Walulu Wolf. It's, it's pretty complicated, actually, the whole situation. Now I'm going to try to steal his Mox Jet using my Scarwood Bandits. And you can see Park tapping two mana to prevent that. And I guess, I guess the cost is three to pay if you want to steal an artifact, because I was tapping three forests there. And am I going to try to steal again? Oh, I'm attacking him now first, using the Maze of If. And then, what am I going to do? Oh, a Winter Orb. Now it all makes sense. So I'm kind of forcing Park 
to tap as many lands as possible before I cast that Winter Orb. And interestingly enough now, because of that Maze of F, he will have to choose, am I going to use the Maze uh, to prevent the two damage from the Scarwood Bandits? Or am I going to take the damage so I can untap some more? That Winter Orb is kind of holding uh, him hostage because of that Maze of If situation. Then again, he's got plenty of mana still. Attacking now with his 1-6 and with his 3-5 Iron Root Tree Folk. And of course, I'm a little bit wary. Maybe he has another Giant Grove in hand. I guess I can block. I'm blocking here with both of the Spiders. Not deciding to double block, just blocking the People of the Woods and the Spider and the Iron Root Tree Folk on the Spider. And having that Wailulu Wolf to possibly pump one of the two Spiders, I can, I can use one of the Spiders here. Look at that, using the Maze of If to take the Iron Root Tree Folk out of combat. So that means I don't take any damage. And I'm using... The oh, it's working! I've stole his mox jet. <laughs> He's saying, you know what? You can have the jet. I'm not going to pay two mana for it anymore. And here you can really see, uh, and my Timmy button is representing the mox jet, by the way. But here you can really see the power of combining uh, Winter Orb with the mox jet. So let's take a look. What else can I do? Tapping three because I'm also tapping the mox jet. There is a Spitting Slug, 2-4 with First Strike. If you pay a green and one, if you don't pay a green and one, then your opponent's creatures that block it actually have First Strike. It's, uh, yeah, one of these interesting, the dark cards. I really, really like the dark, beautiful set. So much flavor, the art is fantastic. Not too powerful, but still there are some good cards in there. And there's an Arena. Ooh, and this is an interesting card. For two and tap, he can choose a, uh, a creature that he wants to put in the arena, and that will fight one of the creatures that I choose to put in the arena. At this point, it's not that relevant, but maybe later in the game it could play a bigger part, and both board states, or actually my board mainly, is really gummed up. A lot of creatures attacking again with the Forest Walker. Is he going to use his Maze of If? You can see him kind of doubt, am I going to use the maze? Am I not going to use the maze? I mean, he's still on 15. He's got plenty of life. Sending it back, untapping his maze again. And there is a Black Lotus. It's really funny to see a Black Lotus in a deck like this. And it looks like it's a CE. Collector's Edition. And... It, Park, is he passing turn here or not? Yeah, he's passing turn. I can try to steal the Lotus. That would be kind of funny. With my Scarwood Bandits. I think I should go for it. Okay, actually, I'm attacking. Okay, that's a little bit. I think I should try to steal it. That would be much more fun. And now I'm thinking what my opponent can do here. He hasn't done it yet. He can use his Arena. Oh, but of course, I can choose what I want to put into the arena. So I was thinking maybe he can kill my Scarwood Bandits with the arena. But the way arena works is he chooses a creature to put in the arena and I choose a creature to put in the arena. And of course, I'm not going to choose my Scavenger Bandits or sorry, Scarwood Bandits. Um, and now I'm thinking, am I going to steal the Black Lotus here? A little glitch on the side of park. And it seems like, yeah, there's the glitch. It could also be my connection, by the way, uh, Park. You know, my connection isn't perfect, but it looks like it's working now. And oh, look at this. There's kind of like, I would almost say an alpha strike attacking with all my creatures except the Wild Lily Wolf, keeping that at bay, of course, to pump the creatures. And probably what am I looking at? I'm thinking he's got Maze of If, two blockers. I've got four creatures. One is Forest Walk. And my other three creatures have four toughness. So I don't really have to be afraid of anything. And you know what? If Park has a Giant Grove... I'd rather have him that he uses that on defense than on offense. So let's just see what he has. Maybe another transmutation. We're just going to bite the bullet. So attacking here with two giant spiders, two two fours, and a spitting slug at two four. That gives the opponent blocking creature first strike. But if I pay a green and one, my spitting slug gets first strike. I don't know if it's very relevant, but still. And there he's declaring the blocks. People of the Woods on the spitting slug and Iron Root Tree Folk. On the giant spider and then he's using his mace for my giant spider that means he's gonna get oh he's using the lotus here 
to use his arena, putting his tree folk in the arena. And I believe he wants to fight it with the giant spider that he just sent back. So what he's doing is uh, he's declaring blockers, but before damage is dealt, he's putting his iron root tree folk in the arena. So kind of taking it out of the attack and into the arena. I'm putting my untapped giant spider into the arena. Remember, I can choose with arena. And that means both creatures become tapped and they're going to fight each other. There is a transmutation. I can use my Wild Lily Wolf now. Because of the transmutation, My iron, the Iron Root Tree Folk becomes a 5-3 creature, kind of the Juggernaut stats. And I can use my Wild Lily Wolf now to pump my Giant Spider, making that into a 3-5. And that means we have a trade. And I think that's probably what I'm going to do here. Oh, and it looks like he was still taking the damage earlier. But I guess if he wouldn't have done that, I could have pumped it with the Wild Lily Wolf. So it doesn't really matter that much. The only big difference is my Wailuli Wolf would be blocked as well. And I think we kind of discussed this scenario. I remember it now. And we went through it and we said, okay, the only thing you could have changed is that I would have had to tap my Wailuli Wolf. But no matter what, the Iron Root Tree Folk would have died. There was no way of, of saving it. So it doesn't matter that much. And I think this is kind of my turn, right? Or am I going to do more afterwards? It looks like we're still discussing it a little bit. And uh, this is also these interesting board states that you get. If you always play with the same cards, you always get the same results. And it's really refreshing to play with these cards and to kind of see, you know, what happens, what doesn't happen. And look at this park. is only untapping his Maze of If. Cannot do a lot because of the Winter Orb. That is great news for me. I'm untapping one of the lands, playing an Ashnaut's Transmogrant. And remember that Timmy Talks button is actually a Mox Jet. And that proves to be very useful at this stage in the game. Attacking again with three of my creatures. Is he going to use his maze again? I mean, if he does, it makes sense that he does, but it's really keeping him hostage. So he's taking four damage. He's going to drop down to seven. And things are looking bad for my opponent here. He needs he needs a Nevenorth disc, but he can't cast it. I guess he needs to get rid of that Winter Orb. I mean, does he play with Crumble? I don't think he does. This is really sweet. Wall of Brambles, a wall in the house. It's actually a 2-3 uh, regenerator. And it looks like I'm using my Ashnaut's Transmogrant on my Spitting Slug. Am I making that into a 2-4? Oh, I'm making it into a 3-3 three, three, and then I'm fighting with the Wall of Brambles. Okay, that kind of makes sense. No, I'm not fighting because I don't have it. I am. Oh, I'm stealing it. Oh, wow. That took a long time for me to kind of get that. Uh, it's my own strategy, but okay. So what I've done is Ashnaut's Transmogrant on the Wall of Brambles, making it a 3-4 artifact creature and then stealing it with my Scarwood Bandits. The problem is that uh, Park just doesn't have enough mana to cancel that. Remember, he needs to pay two mana to cancel that effect. When I did it, he only had one mana. So this is a pretty cool play. Stealing a wall of brambles, why not? Uh, attacking here with everything I have. So he's going to block one. He's going to send one back. And I can actually pump it with the Wailuli Wolf as well. So I can deal three damage in total. And I mean, this is more bad news for Park here. He's dropping to eight. And I mean, I can't really see him bounce back from this. Then again, I mean, I'm not an expert when it comes to his deck, so we'll just have to wait and see. But wow, what a cool move to steal that Wall of Brambles. That's really a first for me. It's never, I've never done that before. Uh, again, blocking one of the creatures. That means four damage. And with the Wolf, possibly five damage coming in. Or actually, oh, of course, only one creature is going to go. And there's a Giant Grove and a double... Pump. So that means he's going to go to one. Wow, he's still on one life. He's not dead yet. There's a giant growth on the people of the woods. Or am I trying to kill the people of the woods? That's what I'm doing. Interesting choice. Okay. Not quite sure what happens there, but it seems like Park didn't take any damage. I'm not sure if that's correct, but... We'll just have to see next turn untapping my entire force here. It's really difficult to get through that Maze of If and that people of the um, people in the woods. 
And now I'm also attacking with the scavenger focus. I can pump it into a 3-3 uh, three, three with my Walulu Wolf. So sending back, blocking the spider, sending back. Oh, look at that, using Pendlehaven. Dealing six damage. So what I'm doing, there's just so much happening. I'm using my Pendlehaven on the scavenger folk, making it a 2-3, then using double Walulu Wolf on it, making it a 4-5, plus the two damage of the, of the Scarwood. So that's giving him six damage. Oh, this is cool. I believe, isn't this Living Lance and Enchantment turning all the forests into 1-1 one, one creatures? And this is just a little gimmick of Park saying, okay, listen up. I've lost this one, but I want to go out with a bang. So I'm untapping as many forests as I can. I'm going to trample over him with an army of living forests. <laughs> Park, man, this is a really cool game. I so much appreciate the deck you've built, the way you play. And uh, it's just it's just a joy. So... This is just the first game. This is crazy. So one up for me. We're going to go to our sideboard. Game number two. Okay, so I'm one up. Park gets to start. And hopefully I get that uh, Scarwood Bandits machine going again. It's really fun to steal like Wall of Woods and uh, Mox Jets and whatever. Really cool card to play with. There's my Ashnot's Transmogrant, kind of the key card of this deck. And there's the key card of Park. That's the People of the Woods, a 1-2 right now. And I really like the Drew Tucker art of People of the Woods, by the way. Beautiful, beautiful card. Now a 1-3, gonna swing in here, gonna go to 19. There's that wall of brambles. 2-3, and for one green, you can regenerate it. There is a tracker, so again, I kind of have that situation going for me where I can start making the tracker bigger and trying to kill some creatures of park. I wonder if I'm going to use my Ashnots and look at that. I guess I am. My Ashnot is now, or my tracker is now a 3 3 because of the Ashnot Transmogrant. And now I can try to kill his people of the woods. But remember, if he has a transmutation, oh, I'm not doing it. Choosing to play the Wailuli Wolf first. And thinking about attacking or not attacking doesn't really seem sensible to attack here. There is a crumble. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <coughs> oh this is such a good, well timed here, Park. Oh man, that crumble is coming in from the sideboard because we do have sideboards actually for this for these two decks. Um, wow, wow, wow! It means I'm gaining some life, but man, now I'm regretting that decision to play the wolf. It would have been better to just kill the. People of the Woods. And this is interesting, a Night Soil. So Night Soil is an enchantment from Fallen Empires. We're actually playing Eternal Central Rules. Although I don't think we really play with a lot of strip mines. I play with zero strip mines at the moment in this in this game. Uh, but Night Soil, you can pay one and then you can remove two creatures from one graveyard. That's very important. And you get a 1-1 one, one Suproling uh, back for that. And let's see what I'm gonna do here. There is a Giant Spider. 2-4 powerhouse. And already the game is pretty locked up. You know, what, what this game really needs on both sides is some flyers, but we're just not playing with flyers, I guess. And also that uh, Maze of If is making it really difficult. Again, Park has drawn that card pretty quickly in the game. There I'm finding my Scarwood Bandits again, but no... Uh, artifacts yet on the board at my opponent's side. Of course, I can use my Ashnot's Transmogrant, and I'm pointing that out now as well. And I can say, I'm going to make an artifact creature on your side and try to steal it. But the question is if that would be worthwhile right now. I am attacking with it because it also has Forest Walk, and I'm playing another one, another Scarwood Bandits. These cards are really, really handy, and the Forest Walk is like this super bonus. Next turn I can attack with both, he only has one mace. Attacking now, blocking on a giant spider, saying if you have a giant grove, just use it, it's fine. Just to be, just to be sure, I'm making it a 3-5. And there is the giant grove, he's using that to, I guess to save it. I can use my transmogrant now to kill it. Am I gonna do that? I mean, he can use his mace to take it out of combat? In all honesty, I don't think this is a good move from my side um, because, oh, nice. Transmutation by Park. Well played, mister. Well, well played. And what I want to say, I just think this is a mistake on my, my part. 
using the Ashnot's transmogran. Okay, I've got another one in hand that kind of explains it a little bit. And I'm stealing his wall of brambles again. Can you believe this? I really have to say, playing with Scarwood Bandits really shows how good the card is. As soon as your opponent doesn't have two to cancel the effect, you can just steal the artifact. You can wait, and it's so annoying for your opponent because he has to keep two mana open constantly. And what if you have more than one Scarwood Bandits? It's just super, a super annoying card here. And um, here we see Park using his Night Soil, I believe, to create a 1-1 creature, removing two creatures from my graveyard there, the Tracker and the Giant Spider. So at least he's got something to block with, but it's not looking great here for Park again. He's got Pressure, and I've got his Wall of Brambles, who's actually a 3-4, because it has a plus one, plus one counter from the Ashnaut's Transmogrant. There is another People of the Woods, and I can just simply attack with both bandits just to get two damage in here. That's probably what I'm going to do. But first I'm tapping two mana. Another Wailuli Wolf. I attack and then the one that he's not sending back I can pump with the wolf. Making it into a 3-3. Three, three, dealing three damage here. And that means that Park is going to drop to 17. Still pretty high in life. And I'm on 21 because of the crumble earlier on my tracker. That seems ages ago by the way that play. Park passing turn, good news for me. I mean, as long as the things stay the same. And what is he going to do? Not using his maze, it seems. Oh, using the spore cloud. That is quite interesting. And I'm actually pointing out, well, in reality, what would have happened is I would have pumped it with the wolves. And then you would have played the spore cloud. Now, of course, the wolves are not going to stay tapped, I believe, because they were not attacking. But Metu Scavenger, uh, Scarwood Bandits are going to stay tapped. Ooh, playing one of those annoying Winter Orbs. Make it really difficult here for Park to kind of do his thing. Of course, he can attack here with People of the Woods. And with his 1-1 token. But deciding not to, because it would only give 2 damage. And oh, and of course, I've got the Wall of Brambles. I forgot about the Wall of Brambles. Oh, look at this, another... Scarwood Bandits, it does mean I'm completely tapped out. And with that Winter Orb, that can be quite difficult. And look at that, Park has found his Black Lotus. That can give him the mana he needs to do something here. Ooh, this is a good sign for Park. This can get him back into the game. Never Neural's Disc. Oh my goodness, he can use the Disc next turn. Wipe away all my Scarwood Bandits that are so, so useful. It's like the MVP so far for me in this matchup. And uh, the Neverneurl's Disc, that could spell the comeback for Park Goldfield here. The player from LA, is he going to do it next turn? Is he going to reset the board? I'm first going to attack, of course, with all my Forest Walkers, sending one back, pumping the others with the Wolves, actually doing six damage. I think I'm not really giving Park an option, am I? And now he's thinking, do I want to untap the maze? If I'm going to use the disc anyway, maybe just untap a land. I think that's actually a good strategy. Deciding to do, yeah, deciding to untap a forest here. And he's going to blow everything up. He's going to blow everything up. And it looks like I am still had a mana left to regenerate that wall of brambles. Okay. I didn't see it there, but I guess I still had a forest left open to regenerate my wall of bramble, saving it from destruction. That means I still got a 3-4 wall. And look at me go here. It's actually not too bad, this disc. It allows me to untap my entire, all my lands. That's what I'm trying to say here, I guess. And playing a floral spasm. The 2-2 two -two creature is back again. But I've got my wall to block it. I'm not afraid for the Floral Spasm at this stage in the game. But it is a blocker. It's going to buy Park some time. The Maze of If is still there. There we see a Strip Mine. It's not really going to do much. Oh, the Swamp Thing is in the game. So Swamp Thing is actually a Moss Monster. But look at that altar. How cool. And the stats of Moss Monster are 3 power, 6 defense. So it's really difficult to get through. Uh, the wall, again, that park is building up quite rapidly and successfully.
He's got the mace, he's got the moss monster, and yeah, just for fun, he's got a floral spasm. Not really sure what it can do, but hey, it's nice to have it in the deck. Floral spasm is one of those creatures that, you know, it's an interesting creature, but it needs to first deal damage in order to destroy an artifact, and that's a difficult thing. Maybe if you have a Dwarven Warriors next to your floral spasm, you kind of have this artifact killing machine. That, that would actually be pretty sweet. So uh, maybe you want to ma make a note here, Floral Spasm and Dwarven Warriors, that's kind of the combo of the day. Um, drawing a card, you're just passing turn, that's bad news for me. I mean, I've got six lands and I'm not doing anything while well, I'm rearranging my lands. Oh, look at this, strip mining. Two of my lands, gonna go back to four here, and there is a Night Soil. And I think, I think for Park, why not just destroy some of the lands, why not do it? There is a City of Shadows. City of Shadows, um, a land from the dark. I can tap it to sacrifice a creature. And then the creature is exiled, I believe. And you can put a counter on City of Shadows. And when you tap it, you get X colorless mana equal to the amount of counters. It's actually a pretty good land when you play with it. It's one of those cards when you look at it, you think, whatever, you know, I'm not really going to use this. And then when you play with it, you realize, you know what, City of Shadows actually pretty good and oh night soil getting some night soil action really nice to see the night soil doing work here night soil neveneral's disc another nice little strategy by park getting three one one suproling tokens and removing some creatures and the removing of the creatures is not really relevant against my deck but it can be very relevant against other decks anime dead is a very popular card these days and a Night Soil can kind of help you from the anime debt problem if you're facing a player who has that in his deck. Playing a safe haven here. And look at that. Another People of the Woods. 1-5. Oh, man. This game is going to take a while. It's so gummed up right now. And that, can you imagine that we had a Neveneros Disc activation only a few turns ago, and now look at the board state. Again, it's just full of stuff. I guess that's what I like about green. Green really wants to grow things and put things on the board. You know, it's not an efficient control color. You just want to slam your stuff down. And that really reminds me of my early days of Magic, where Wall of Stone still was a staple. People would just slam their stuff on the board, and you would just see what's going to happen. And yes, some of the games took forever. We just didn't care because it was fun. Let's see what Park is going to do here. He's going to attack Florospasm, Swamp Thing. He's going to attack with everything he has. That's quite interesting. I'm expecting him to have some Giant Gross in hand here. Of course, he still has that Maze of If to take one of his creatures out of combat altogether. Regenerating here. Wall of Brambles probably on the Moss Monster, the Swamp Thing. And am I going to block with the Spitting Slug? I think I kind of have to, right? Have to block that Spasm. Or am I just going to take a lot of damage and only block the spasm? That's another option as well. That's always kind of hard when you're looking at this screen. You don't know what the specific blocks are. And, ooh, look at that. Nice transmutation. <laughs> and the giant growth. This is tons and tons of damage. This is five. This is eight damage with one swing. He's counting up the other damage. Oh. I only blocked the spasm. I was afraid for a giant grove. How stupid am I? Look at that. My life total going from 21 to 8. Oh, man. This is so stupid. And now I'm kind of retaliating with an attack, which I don't think is smart, actually. I should just keep my stuff untapped. There is a marsh gas to make matters even worse. I am going absolutely nowhere. I should just stop making these mistakes. Oh, wow. Okay, this is something, this Meek Stone makes a lot of difference. Playing this Meek Stone is going to keep the Moss Monster at least tapped. That's going to save me a little bit. This is such an interesting game, and I have to give my compliments to Park for playing the uh, Marsh Gas. Oh no, Dark Heart of the Woods. One black and one green to cast. He can sacrifice a force to gain three life, and this is really bad news for me, because we were kind of racing to the end of this game, and look at that attacking now. Oh my goodness. So, blocking the Floral Spasm, probably. And having to block with the Wailuli Wolf, gonna block probably one of the Suproling Tokens. And... 
I am then going to put it in City of Shadows or not? Oh, wow. It's not really clear how I'm blocking. I'm feeling that I shouldn't put the wolf into the City of Shadows. Maybe I really want to because I hardly ever play with City of Shadows. I think this is, again, a bad move. I think I should have blocked my little wolf on one of the Suprolling tokens to trade it and then block my Wall of Brambles on the uh, Spuzzin. For some reason, I'm not doing that. And in all honesty, these blocks, my blocks, just didn't make sense the previous turn. And also the turn before that attack was a bad choice. So making a few bad choices, I think I'm a little bit rattled up after all that damage that I took. I went from 21 to 8, and that was just a brilliant move by Park. And I think he's actually going to take this game number 2. And the good news is that means we're going to take see a second, or I mean a third game. So that's the good news. But first, we'll just have to see what's going to happen. And the Moss Monster kind of remains tapped. I think I'm pointing that out now with the Meek Stone. And, um, I mean, he can still attack here. He can attack with three Suprolings, People of the Woods, and the Floral Spasm. And, I mean, I'm on five. I think it's worth it. That's exactly what he's doing. Another Alpha Strike. Remember, I've got Safe Haven exactly using that on Scavenger of the Woods. Can use it to block Floral Spasm. I can kill two tokens, and I can only take a little bit of damage. Again, that super annoying Maze of If that he's using so well, taking another creature out of combat, his Floral Spasm. He knows I need to block the Spasm every single time. I'm on three. I'm really slowly dying, but I'm still in the game. Tapping City of Shadows, there's another Relic Barrier. And Relic Barrier works really well when you've got Ashnaut's Transmogrin on the board, but when you don't have that card on the board, it's not as useful, especially against the deck of Park, who hardly plays with any artifacts at all. I'm on 3, he's on 11 with Dark Heart of the Woods. It's looking bad for me. That's what I love, games that can just, boom, change. And Park is choosing not to attack, so it looks like it's kind of we've kind of stabilized here. There is a crumble on the Meek Stone. That is bad news. That means the Swamp Thing is going to untap. So he's got one, two, three, four, five creatures attacking with everything he has right now. I have to block the Swamp Thing on my Wall of Brambles probably. And making my Scavenger a 2-3 and of course blocking the Spasm. That means I'm going to take two more damage. Right? Or am I going to... Yeah, I'm going to take two more damage I feel. Going to go to two. There's a... Uh, Iron Root Tree Folk? Okay, I'm lucky here with the Meek Stone, but it's not enough to save me, I think. Next turn, he can attack with everything. Yeah, that's it. Putting in an Alpha Strike just for the funsies, you know, just because I feel like it. Dealing four more damage and playing a Giant Grove and playing a second Giant Grove. Am I going to win this? Am I going to win this? What can my opponent do? Oh, he's just going to sack, of course, to Dark Heart of the Woods. Okay, yeah, of course, I can't. I cannot win this. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So what Dark Heart of the Woods does, I, I think I already mentioned it, but you can sacrifice a forest to gain three life. So I had enough giant growth to actually kill him. I just wanted to show that, I guess. And, and now he killed me. I really feel that... Um, yeah, first off, Park, you played this magnificently. And second off, I made a few mistakes after that huge turn that you had where I went from 21 to 8. So, well done. Game 2 victory for the Swamp Thing. That means we're going to go to game number 3. Game number 3, and it is a 1-1. It looks like I'm taking a mulligan here, and I'm on the play after losing that game. And let's see what's going to happen here. There is an Elves of Deep Shadow. It's a good start for my opponent. No, not a 2-drop for me. People of the Woods... Things are looking good for Park here in Game 3. Can I find... Yes, that's what I wanted to say. Can I find a Tracker? Now I can use my Transmogrant again to pump my Tracker and kill the People of the Woods. Ooh, there's a second People of the Woods. And he passes turn here. Now, am I going to use the Transmogrant or do I want to keep it for later? I guess I'm making that decision right now to keep it for later. And I'm killing the Elves of Deep Shadow. And that's also important because Park has no black mana. So the Elves of Deep Shadow was his only black source. There is a Floral Spasm. 
that is actually interesting. I need to, if I want to keep my astronauts altar around, I need to keep my tracker untapped here to deal with that floral spasm. Of course, I can use my astronauts transmogrant to kill the floral spasm. Or, okay, I can play the giant spider. That's going to do the job as well of blocking it. And we also see a maze of if here, by the way, by, by Park. Again, that maze of if. That has been doing so much work for Park in this matchup. And look at both people of the woods going to a 1-4. And he's got that defense again. It's, it's like completely locked. He doesn't have any swamps, which is a problem for him. But as long as he's got enough defense, he can just wait until he draws into the right lands and start playing the right spells. And okay, there we see a sideboard card here. Stormseeker, and Stormseeker deals damage equal to the amount of cards that Park has in his hand. I guess they were three because he's dropping to 17. Playing a strip mine, attacking with both people of the woods. Hmm, this kind of smells giant growth, but you know what? I'm going to go for it, blocking one of them with my giant spider, taking a damage from one of the people of the woods. And he's simply taking the people of the woods out of combat, which of course he can do. I mean, Mace... A lot of people think of defense when they think of Maze of If, but it's just as good in offense because you can just attack and whenever a block isn't favorable, you can just say, okay, I'm going to take my attacker out and I'm, I'm going to save it. So it's really a good card also to have in aggressive strategies. And there is a double attack. Of course, when you play aggressive, don't play with four, four Maze of Ifs. I'm not saying that, but you can see what one of these mazes can do and he's attacking. I'm actually not blocking right now interesting or actually I was blocking one and I guess I was taking a damage um, attacking here with my Scarwood Bandits again they're so useful in this matchup because of that forest walk that Maze of If can keep one at bay but now I have two of them so I can start dealing a little bit of damage and Park just cannot find any swamps I wonder if that is bothering him that means he can't play Transmutation for example which is one of his important cards in the deck and you can see that uh, that previous game where he dealt so much damage in one turn using the transmutation and of course a giant grove there in that situation is he gonna cast something big here looks like it first he's gonna attack taking a damage blocking one with the giant spider and it's interesting to see that I just don't want to use my tracker to do it, what I can do is, of course, I can use my Ashton's Transmogrin to make my tracker a 3-3 and I can kill the Floral Spasm, but I'm just not doing it. Maybe also a little bit afraid. Oh, Giant Grove there on the tracker dealing 5 damage. Maybe also a little bit afraid of the Crumble I saw earlier that came in from the sideboard. Another Stormseeker. And he's going to drop to 7. So Stormseeker's doing some work here. And of course, that is a way to deal some damage. There's the Nevenerals disc. This is actually pretty strong. I can try to... Actually, I can think I can steal the disc. Do I have... Oh, I don't have enough mana to steal it. If I have a land, I can steal the disc. It's 3 mana to use that activation on Scarwood Bandits. I don't have enough mana, so I decide to attack instead, dealing 2 more damage. He's going to drop to 5 here. And that's about it. Interesting enough that I didn't choose to just attack with everything. I mean, the disc is there anyway. He's going to use it, so might as well attack. And now he's going to attack with everything he has. I guess I'm just going to block it here. The best thing to do here is use my Ashnot's Transmogrant. I think on my tracker, make it a 3-3. Block the Floral Spasm. This is interesting, right? I'm declaring blocks, just waiting for him to see how he wants to divide his damage. But he's not waiting for that. He's just using his disc, blowing everything up. And then he's playing an Iron Root Tree Folk. And I'm playing a Wiley Wolf. Attacking here. I'm going to 10. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, I'm even going lower. No way. I'm on five. Look at that. Transmutation and the giant growth and untapping it at the end step with the maze of if. And I kind of remember this play because in my hand I have a meek stone. But as long as he keeps untapping with the. Um... Oh, this is interesting. 
pumping it up, and now it's going to use that maze of it again. And this is just super frustrating for me because I've got a mixed stone in hand, so I know that if he doesn't use his mace, his tree folk stay tapped. The problem is he's not doing that. And attacking with both, have to chump one, gonna go to two. Oh, and it's over. <laughs> oh, this is so sweet. Pointing out the meek stone. What a sweet ending to a brilliant, brilliant match. It's really nice to see cards like transmutation. Uh, being used in this way uh, or is it transformation i don't know i don't know whatever the, the card the name of the card is um park congratulations on this victory well well played really sweet to see your deck in action and i know you're coming back to the channel to also play with your winter deck uh, against one of my flavor decks as well so um thank you very much park for, uh, for this match and also I would like to thank you for watching another episode of Timmy Talks the channel where we talk old school magic and uh, let me know in the comments below all the mistakes that I've made because I think there were plenty and also make sure to give compliments to Park's beautiful decks and altars if you want to know more about his work he also does commissions you can find him on Instagram the link to that is in the description below so there you can find all that sweet information and if you want to support the channel, and I'm sure you want to if you're enjoying the content, please like my video, leave a comment, become a subscriber, share this on all your socials with the text, look at the crazy deck that, that Timmy is playing again, ha, or something like that. Um, and what you can also do is you can become a patron of Timmy Talks by joining Timmy Talks on Patreon. Then you can uh, join me on the Discord server and you can join the Timmy Talks tournaments and other events like that. And of course, get your name in the end scroll. Talking about the end scroll, let's take a look at the fantastic, amazing patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het als fik het als zomba kan zien.